Welcome, welcome back, everybody, to the Post Gazette Sports Now YouTube channel, where we are joined today by, I think it's fair to say, a, a Pitt Panther legend, Jerome Lane, joins us here a day before uh, he's recognized for his famous dunk 35 years ago on the 25th against Providence. We're going to talk about that and a whole bunch of other stuff. But before we get going, Jerome, how okay, are you doing today? no problem. How are you doing today? Oh, sitting over here watching my grandson. Uh, we got me running around this morning. Oh, great to hear. Great to hear. So uh, I want to start off. I mean, obviously, we'll talk about the dunk and everything, but I want to talk about before the dunk as well. I mean, you, you, you come to Pitt out of Akron. You were at mm -hmm. St. Vincent St. Mary High School, which has produced a lot of great athletes. Obviously, one very, very notable one. Uh, who plays for the Lakers right now, but a, a ton of talent, great tradition there. You were a McDonald's All-American. What made you choose Pitt over other schools? I'm sure a lot of other teams showed you interest. What made you choose the Panthers? Well, really, I, my real school I really wanted to go to was Ohio State because I'm from Ohio. You know, that was, I watched them all the time. But, you know, uh, I was a guy that went in there, Curtis Wilson. That was I played with him my sophomore year. And he went to Ohio State, and he he just didn't have great reviews, or he was telling me good things about it, and they just made me go to another direction. So now we go to the, the you know, my high school school coach go to a situation where, you know, we go into the school, and you know that's going you're gonna start right away. You know, we ain't gonna mess around, man. We, since you can't go to since you we don't Ohio State is not the best situation. Now we put ourselves in a position where you're gonna play right away, you know. And, and it was came down to between Pitt and really Oklahoma. And I, you know, Pitt just you know gave me more guarantees about playing. So I, I went to Pitt. So you go to Pitt and you, you get immediate playing time. And when you were there, I mean, the Big East was at its height. You're you're going up against some of the best players to ever play college basketball uh in an incredibly competitive conference. What was that like going from high school to well, college? Well, that's another that's another reason why, you know, the the Big East came down to the situation too. Because remember this, you know, we was watching Patrick Ewan and Mullins and, you know, uh uh Pearl, all the greats, you know, and you wanted to well, I'm gonna go play in the Big East. And then when it came down to Pitt and Oklahoma, I mean that made a difference too. So what was that like, you know, getting getting to go from watching that as a high school athlete and being a part of the recruitment process to going on campus and becoming a starter and instantly going up against the Syracuse's, well, the Villanova's, the Georgetown's? Year, yeah, my first year I remember vividly is uh, <laughs> the very first time we played Georgetown, man. I mean, the, everybody had to, you know, everybody's shoes, you know, tie none out the way. They, they uh, sweat suits all the way up to their neck. You know, it was like uh, John Thompson had them like soldiers out there. I was like, look at these boys down there. You know, I'm like, man. And that's like, my first time I ran through the, going through the uh, lane trying to make a cut for the play. Um, uh, what's his name? With the wore the boot, boots. He wore the boots in, for Georgetown. Uh, but he hit me with an elbow in my chest. And I said, and the ref is right there. I said, ref, I mean, you saw that. He said, welcome to the Big East. I said, get out of here, man. Never went in there again after that. So was that just, that was just how the play was back then in the Big East, right? It was, it was very, just physical. Very physical. Very physical. Did you have to adjust your game to that? Or did you play yeah, that way you had a little bit in high school? You had, or, no? you had to be physical just like everybody else. So in the offices, you work, you working everywhere to get more physical, just like them. Because if you wasn't physical, you wasn't gonna win in the Big East. So your freshman year, I think Pitt was just above five hundred. There's a coaching change that takes place, I believe, after your freshman year, and you guys start to take the next step. What was that like? You know, when you're seeing other talented players come in, and you're starting to see Pitt become a force in the nation's top conference. Well, you've seen situations happen one. Chipman got fired, and um, well, Chipman, well, Chipman just resigned, and then he was done at the end of the season. But when um, Paul came in, you got to think he brought some of his guys in with him too. So you know, some players he didn't he didn't pick back up. You know, some players you know know had to step back. Like me, I had to. I went from point guard to playing power forward when Paul got there. You know, basically he was trying to weed me out for his players that he brought in, brought in like. Uh, Tico Cooper and uh, 
Ah uh, man, he live in Canada right now. I can't remember, but he he brought his guys in because he brought it with the uh from Navy in. And he brought Tico in. You know what I'm saying? And Rich, he, he crossed Rich Kerrigan out, and then me, he, he put me at power four. So right there, going from point guard to power four, that's telling me that, you know, quit. So, you know, quit ain't in me. So that's what I was going to say. So you, you make that position change, but it, it looked like that position change kind of made your career even better. I mean, you became one of the best rebounders in the Big East. How did you make that adjustment? <laughs> Well, you got to think about everybody I was guarding was basically two to three inches taller than me. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, I, I battled as much as I could. But since I could dribble the ball so good, I didn't have to get a ball to nobody. I could just take the ball and take off with it. So I, that, I put a, a lot of press on those fours and fives trying to guard me because I'm going with the ball. Let's get to running. All right. So speaking of taking off with the ball, let's get into the play. Um, I want you to take me through the buildup for that game because you guys were coming off of a loss to Oklahoma. I think it was on the road, Oklahoma. Yeah, it was in, in, the, in Norman, yep. Yeah, they were number 11 in the country. You come back to Pittsburgh, and you're playing a Big East team. Game's on ESPN. You need to recover. You know, what was the mentality going into that matchup against Providence? Well, first of all, we was pissed off losing at at Oklahoma because that was a statement game to us. Mm -hmm. You know, losing that game with – kind of really hurt us so you know we got to providence i mean we i, I wasn't really worried about providence because come playing after playing oklahoma i just knew we was gonna blow them out especially at pit okay so the play happens you know miller gets the steal he's in transition he's got two options he goes to you um you know take me through that play first off have you ever shattered a backboard like that before were you trying to shatter the backboard or were you just trying to make a big dunk and get the crowd going. Well, I think everybody try to – when you go to dunk, you try to bring the rim home with you. But I never did it before. So what goes through your mind, you know, when, when you first hear that glass start to shatter, what's going through your mind as all of that's taking place? Well, first of all, when a, I just thought the rim collapsed because uh, before, uh, before they did the rim the way they are now, it, they had them springs in there. So when it, we used to dunk the ball, the springs would collapse and the rim would just fall, fall down. And that just replaced the rim and then that's it. But this time when I dunked the ball, I just when I when I came, when I dunked the ball, and I came down, when I came up, that's when Demetrius Gore was like, damn, Rome, look. So I turned around. I was like, damn. Then when I turned back around, Charles had hugged me. He was like, wow, Rome. And then, you know, they was trying to get the uh the, the, the you know the the, the glass Plastic parts glass. To, yeah yeah to get it out of my hair and stuff and then the referees everybody go to the locker room and we had about a thirty minute delay till they replaced the hoop and got the glass up. That's what I wanted to ask about next. I mean, what's that delay like? I mean, in game delays are very rare, and normally when you have an in game delay for a sport like basketball, something really bad typically happened. Right. Exactly. Uh, but for there, it, it was after like something really good. So what, what's said in the locker room during that 30 minute break? Are you guys strategizing? Or are you just trying to stay warm? Take yeah, me through was what that break was like. Yeah, they were, they were strategizing, trying to like make, try to make me run out there by myself, you know, run around the court like a fool, you know, trying to get the crowd. Well, I said, I'm not doing that, man. We all running out together, man. They try to get me run out there by myself. No, we, I'm not doing it. That was the whole thing. Talk. Okay. Not doing that. So they wanted you to just go out like a curtain call, like in baseball. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, nah, man. We all going out together, man. So you guys did go out as a team? Yeah, we went out as a team. All right. I mean, how cool was that moment? I'm sure, like, the place had to have gone wild. Oh, man. Sold out it was erupt right when we went out. When we came back out, it erupted again. And they gave us probably maybe a little three or four minutes to warm up, back the game again. And then when you guys resumed that game, I mean, the final score was 90 to 56. Like you said, you weren't really worried about Providence to begin with. But, I mean, was there any doubt at all that it was your day after that type of play or anything like that? Oh, man. So after the game, we, you know, we go on campus and we eat, you know what I'm saying? He's, we go to the fry place. And, man, it just seemed like everybody came in there. It was like, man, good dunk. God, man, we had to leave. When, when did it start to register – that that play was going to be something that you would always be known for. Cause man, I'm sure it didn't immediately. Everybody register. was talking about, I'm talking about, I mean, they talk about still now, but really I'm talking about every time they see me, that's the only thing they know. I mean, I don't even know I was a lead rebounder or what type of player I was. 
all they just said, man, that was a great dunk. And that, that's us. So like following the dunk, you know, what was life like? Cause like you, you pointed out, I mean, you were an all American that year. You, you, I think led the country in rebounding. You were a first round NBA draft pick, but I'm sure, like you said, everyone just know, send it in Jerome. That's, that's what they, did you ever get tired of that? Was that ever frustrating or was it just always still kind of cool that, Hey, you know, I'm known for one of the best plays I've ever made. Man, everybody won't know the Roddy. No. Or do you would be playing a, a, the sport you're playing? Because that's all you want is to be the, the big of the sport. And if it's that dunk, I, but when we, I don't see nobody else on national TV doing the same thing. So could you I, – I would I would wonder what that would have been like if you made that dunk – like if you dunked the basketball today and shattered the rim with social media. Could you imagine how crazy it would have been? Oh, you ever think about that? man. I, I would have probably had about I, I, right now. What you think the uh, views is probably? I bet it's probably about right up about, about ten million. Yeah, eight million. You would have imagine had so if it was. I'm talking about if the media was when it happened, just right there. How many views do you think I'd have had? Right, you would have had so many nil deals from that too. You really, golly, you played in the wrong era. So <laughs> when you were when you're in the NBA, did that ever come up? Uh, you know, when you're when you're playing against other guys, or did your teammates ever ask you about that play? I mean, the people you cool with or you associate with, but you know, most people don't want to, you know, be trying to talk about something that you did. Like they, yeah. you know, man, I ain't right. I'm mean, a good dunk, though, man. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't play. No, not no NBA players, mostly fans and family and friends. Fair enough. Fair enough. So I think a lot of people are wondering did you ever do that again? Shout no. Backboard. A game practice? Never. 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 Did you ever try? Every time. Every time. <laughs> that Providence game, I got the same dunk again. The rim, the rim felt like I that bricks was holding that rim because <laughs> it was so tight. It was a you know it was a new backboard rim. You know the other rims we you know, we practiced on it. Rim mm-hmm. that got loose. You know what I'm saying? That when they brought the other rim on, it was brand new and it was tight. So drum, you were at Pitt during a very interesting time. I mean, the 1980s is viewed by a lot of people as kind of the golden standard for Pitt athletics. Football program was really competitive. Basketball program started to really take its next step into relevancy and was a a regular in the national tournament. Um, Things have gone up and down. I was reading a story about the last time you were honored for this play, which was the 30-year anniversary. That was in 2018, the middle of the Kevin Stallings era. And you kind of voiced your frustration with, you know, where Pitt basketball was at that point in time. Um, just just looking back at where it was in 2018 and where it is now, I mean, what are your thoughts on maybe the growth that the program's seen and where the program is now? Okay, I, I'm just talking to, about my era and, and where, where I was talking about Stallings is that I seen no kids competing. Mm-hmm. I, I just seen – I just couldn't watch. I, I turned the game by halftime. I just – it was dis- disgusting basketball. Now, when Young and Young them play and Blair – I loved it. I, I, I loved it. You, you we knew we was in every game or go win every game when they played. That they made me feel like us when we was out there. Right. Stallings area, it, it was it was sickening. It was now, I couldn't watch it. So now where where Pitt's at now, five years later, do you feel like the program is making well? Progress? At least it's getting better. I see I see it incline now. It's getting better. You know what I'm saying? At least I see some growth. I can go with that. But I just can't go see year after year just getting beat to death. Yeah, I think that that's a that's a mentality that a lot of you know Pitt alum and former athletes share. Is there there was that frustration that you know came as a product of five straight losing seasons. But you know, as a guy now who you know obviously still holds Pitt near and dear to your heart, I see you're you're wearing the Panther uh, shirt right now, like. Do you are you optimistic about the way things look just based upon this season, based upon some of the recruits they're bringing in, based upon how they've operated the transfer portal? Well, I can say this from th- this season right here, I see growth. You know, you got to give a man a chance, you know, to get his team right. He just got the job, let's give him a chance. Okay, I see growth now. Now, he can't go from growth to back to square one again. Fair Hell enough. no, okay, we don't want that. So, you know, you're you're going to the game Wednesday. You're going to be honored 35 years. Does it ever get old when when they when they when they bring you back and they play the highlight? And I'm sure you know you'll be a part of the broadcast and everything. 
does does that stuff ever get old or do you do you still you know really appreciate that kind of love that Pitt shows you for that big moment? Think about it. When you're younger, I probably was probably more, you know, it was, it was all right. But now as I get older, I appreciate it a whole, whole, whole lot more than I did when I was younger. You know what I'm saying? For people to still honor you like that. Because that's got to be a goal right there that people respect. All right. And my final question, not basketball related, but you're an Akron guy. So I got to know, what's your go-to order at Swenson's? Say what? Ah. <laughs> Hey, hey, you know the famous burger here, uh, man. Yes, sir. I, I give me a double cheeseburger with double pickles and onions. You gotta go with the galley boy, right? I mean, it, no, I'm not galley boy. I, galley, everybody loves galley boys. They everybody, but I love the double cheese. See, the thing about Swenson is right. it's, everybody think is the meat. They think the the, the sweetness is in the meat. And the sweetness is in that bun. I agree. Yeah. They, so they, so when you buy it, you still, I mean, whatever, got, got a boy double cheeseburger, it's still going to taste similar because of that bun. I think the drinks there, too, are, are not oh, appreciated. Excellent. The California. California is great. Yes. That's what I give me at California. And you got to appreciate the hustle that their staff shows, you know, just running in and out. It's like you running down the lane, you know. Going well, at one point in time, it was only, until the COVID, at one point in time, it was only hiring college students. So that's why they had it like that. Mm -hmm. It was running. They had them going. You ain't lying. They be running. But since the COVID... COVID didn't mess a lot of things up. Yeah, it did. Well, Jerome, I had a really good time chatting with you. I'm sure a lot of people appreciated your insight. And obviously, Pitt fans can check you out Wednesday night. You'll be at the Peterson Event Center having your big play recognized. Thanks for coming on the show. Hey, uh, yeah, please be there. I'll be there also uh, doing autograph sessions um, before the game. All right. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already for everyone viewing in. And keep tuning in. We'll have more content here on the Post-Gazette. Sports Now YouTube channel. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you liked the video, please like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you enjoyed it on Apple Podcasts, please rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts. For six months of digital access to post-gazette.com for just $6, click the link down in the description.